My Fantasy series Blink of the Four Winds, the home of both tree and bone magic, takes place in a world called Erala, governed by the characters of the four directional winds. In crafting this book, I set out to create a world that had the same simplicity but also depth and richness of elemental style world building that we see everywhere, but without using the same elements that we're used to seeing. Everything in this book stems from the characteristics of the four directional winds, north, south, east, and west. In this video, I'll lay out the fundamental concept of the four winds, get into their mythological origin, and discuss how the characteristics of these winds affect the story itself. One of my larger goals with Blink of the Four Winds is to craft a story that mythologizes the American wilderness, such that anyone from or visiting America can relate to the magic in my world as reflective of the real feeling of magic in the natural landscape. Early on, I came up with the ideas for tree and bone magic as a way to capture the cathedral-like quality of American forests and the intensity of the wildlife here. But I also wanted an underpinning concept from which everything in the world can be derived. And I wanted that concept to be something simple, but also beautiful and atmospheric in and of itself. So that simple, mystical, beautiful concept was the wind. It's a mysterious, invisible force of nature. The wind can give us a moment of respite among intense heat, can cut right through our clothes in winter, and can warn us of incoming summer storms. Plus, the wind is the element that passes cyclically from plant to animal, or from tree to bone in my world, binding the two together and sustaining them through the sharing of carbon and oxygen. The concept of the Four Winds was my most direct connection to Native American mythology and all of my world building for Blink. Other cultures have directional wind gods. The Enemoi are the Greek gods of the Four Winds, the children of dawn and dusk. Roman mythology has 12 directional wind gods called the Venti. But Native American mythology already has personified winds directly connected to the actual wind patterns over North America, which is very important to the story when it comes to the intersection of the primary world of Earth and the secondary world of Erla. The Four Directions is a central mythological concept to many Native American tribes across the continent, showing up in symbology, colors, story, and prayers. I used roughly the same animals to represent each of the winds, came up with my own names, blended in some other mythology and then smoothed over the edges to make it all fit together. All who reside in Erla are born from these four figures. The West Wind, Westron. The West Wind is constant, patient, and reliable. In my world connected to the season of spring. He himself is a treeling, though the west winds is divided among treelings and bonelings. Over North America courses the westerly winds. If you watch the wind patterns over the continent, you'll see that they flow in a typically predictable pattern from west to east. Following this pattern is a powerful wind current called the jet stream. Westrin is the jet stream and the westerlies. The west winds is the source of life, the origin of many rivers, in the primary world from the continental divide and in Erla from the Aryan ridges. Westwinders, like the titular character of Blink, are persistent, stubborn, and righteous. The east wind, Astrin. The east wind is fickle and unpredictable, connected to the season of fall. He is an elk with sweet grass threaded throughout his fur. He too is a treeling specializing in sap blood maple magic. The east winds, more than any other windland, has sprawling cities built by both tree and bone magic. The east wind cares little for tradition, history, and antiquated values, but rather progress toward an idealized future. The north wind, Norin. The North Wind is a cold, fierce wind connected to the season of winter. She is a brown bear with vines and strips of cedar bark growing all over her body. She is a boneling, as are most of the inhabitants of the North Winds. The North Wind is where the most feared boneling, the Life Cutter, remains sealed below the Clear Lake, Norin being the warden of his prison. The North being the direction of cold and suffering is also the direction of cleansing. Northwinders endure the ice of winter so that they can be reborn again in spring. They are direct, demanding, and enduring. The South Wind, Surin. The South Wind is gentle, conflict avoidant, and fearful. The wind of summer. 
He's a stag with white tobacco flowers wreathing his antlers and water dripping from their tips. He is a treeling, as is every person who hails from the south winds. The south wind is the embodiment of peace and harmony. Southwinders seek the joy of life, passing the hours in music, song, and dance, but they also avoid conflict at all costs, preferring instead to enjoy a meal or a pipe in the tranquility of the forests, rivers, mountains, and marshes. The variety of this world was exciting to me, but it also created a surprisingly useful structure of balance in a way that I hadn't predicted. East brings change, while West brings constancy. North brings ferocity, while South brings gentleness. The East and West focus on what's best for society, while the North and South focused on what's best for the individual. But as with any duality, the winds need each other in order to be complete. If one attempts to remain constant at all times, like a Westwinder, falling back on only tradition and discipline, then one will miss the opportunity to do the right thing in a situation that demands adaptability. A true master of constancy will know how to remain flexible, so as to keep their values strong and relevant. On the other hand, if one were to always change and seek progress the way an Eastwinder does, then the changes will have no foundation upon on which to stick, and progress will become haphazard and maybe ineffective. A Northwinder attempts to face everything directly, seeking trial after trial and valuing personal growth above all else. But if a Northwinder never takes the time to set order and enjoy peace, eventually everything will burn to the ground for the sake of personal ambition. But if one remains at peace at all times to avoid conflict, the way a Southwinder would prefer, hidden conflicts eventually fester until the desired peace no longer becomes possible. And that last situation is exactly what happens in Blink of the Four Winds book. One. In an attempt to keep the world safe from the imprisoned life cutter and the death that fuels his bone magic, the south wind embraces something called the long peace. A law where nothing can kill, consume, age, or even reproduce. Under his eyes, Erla begins to slowly, slowly break apart. To restore Erla, Blink will have to break the long peace and risk the return of the life cutter once again. Many of you have asked to read Blink of the Four Winds, book one, and I can't wait to get it to you. I've got some exciting news to share about the project in the next couple weeks. But in the meantime, you can email me at the address in the description, and I'll add you to my mailing list where you'll get any updates on the book going forward. And also check out my Patreon. We've got exclusive content coming for both free and paid subscribers over the next couple months. Big things are coming. What kind of wind are you? Looking forward to reading your thoughts and ideas in the comments. If you enjoyed that video, you probably want to check out my tree and bone magic system videos to learn more about the world of Blink of the Four Winds. Support my books and educational work on Patreon. Subscribe for more videos that I hope will inspire and uplift you. Godspeed.